is humiliated and, quote, super pissed is how sources describe President Trump's move tonight after his pick for chief of staff. Staff, I'm sorry. Nick Ayers unexpectedly turned him down. So unexpectedly, in fact, that Trump had already even given Ayers an assignment, assuming that he'd be taking on the new role. So it was like, it's done. The press release is done. Here's your first job. So. Now we are learning Trump's list is vast for possible chief of staff. He's starting from scratch as he's increasingly anxious about his political future. Out front now, Caitlin Collins. And Caitlin, uh, you're reporting, uh, look, Trump is already asking heirs to look into political issues. And here we are. Yeah, that shows you two things. One, just how much President Trump thought he was counting on Nick Ayers to take this job uh, and did not know that there was a chance he could turn it down, even though Nick was insistent during those negotiations that he wasn't going to stay on for those two years that President Trump wanted. But two, it also shows you just how concerned President Trump is getting for what Washington is going to look like in January when you have those newly empowered House Democrats with what they vowed to say is going to be very strict oversight of his administration. So that is a growing concern for him. He realizes that and he wants his new chief of staff to be more politically fo focused, to essentially be by his side and help guide him through uh, the tumultuous next two years that are going to happen. And he often complained he did not think John Kelly was politically shrewd enough to do that job. So who, Caitlin, is in the running at this point from this vast list, right? You go from one to who knows what. <laughs> It's a big list and people are all over the place and some of them are names that have been brought up in the past. But you've got to uh, look at the fact that this list is just roughly 24 hours old because President Trump didn't have a backup. He thought Nick Ayers was going to agree to that timing and now he's essentially starting from square one with this list. But there are a few names that seem to have risen to the top. One of them is the U.S. trade rep Robert Lighthizer, who when he was asked about taking this job yesterday, essentially said he's got a pretty tough job now negotiating those talks with China and he's happy with where he is, but also Congressman Mark Meadows, who just said in a Fox News interview that he had not uh, set up any kind of interview with President Trump, though he would be honored to take the job if he's on the list. But also the Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin is also a name that's been floated among several others. But of course, White House officials are saying this list is fluid. It could change certainly over the next three weeks, but they do realize they've only got three weeks left with John Kelly, who was in his office today on this job, and they know that the clock is ticking, Aaron. All right, thank you very much, Caitlin. I want to go now to Paul Begala, former White House counselor to President Clinton and Scott Jennings, former special assistant to President George W. Bush. Bush, both people with experience working directly with the president. Um, Scott, we now have gone from a list of one and it was all done. The president is humiliated and, quote, super pissed. He is now in this position. He doesn't look good. He doesn't like that. Why are people lined up here? Well, I think the people weren't lined up because it was widely assumed that Nick was going to take the job. So I don't think folks were out there, you know, and knocking on the door saying, hey, consider me your backup plan. No one thought he was going to uh, turn mm. it down. Now, I think the president has an opportunity to find someone who can do a couple of things. Number one, uh, deal with these investigations. I think it would be good if they had a chief of staff who'd maybe lived through some investigations before and understands what that's like in a White House. Number two, I think the person has to be a realist. It's not all my ties and Yahtzee out here. Uh, they have to understand the challenges. Yeah. They have to understand the things they can change and the things they can't. And they also need to not so, be cynical. They need to have a glass half full view of the world and understand it's a high honor to serve in a White House. And it's not about. So you them. think there's going to be a line now, Scott? The president. You think there's going to be a line? I think there are. Yes, I think there are going to be people who want the job. I don't think they're all going to be qualified. And it's the president's job to find someone who checks mm -hmm. a couple of good boxes. Investigations and politics are two on my list. Paul. It's kind of like I'm sure there was a line to big King Henry VIII's sixth wife, but it didn't work out very well for any of them. It's a fool's errand. <laughs> General Kelly, think about this, a four-star Marine who, who served with great honor and distinction in our country. He was in charge of Southern Command, which is all of our military assets in South America, Central America, the yes. Caribbean. Donald Trump wouldn't even let him run 16 acres there uh, on, on Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, the, the, the problem here is Trump, not not the staff or the chief of staff. And, and many good people are not going to want to take that job because the president's impossible. He doesn't really want a chief of staff. Maybe he should just do away with the job. But th that's the problem here is the fish rots from the head down. And, and what he, if he, my honest advice to him, seriously, is Nick Harris would have been the wrong pick anyway, sir. He's a campaign guy like me, like Jennings. The campaign doesn't start till 2020. The best way for Trump to be reelected in 2020 is for him to get a lot of stuff done in 2019. 
So I would urge him actually to, to hire a, a former member of Congress or, or a current one. I think Meadows is probably too disliked by the Republicans, much less the Democrats. But a Pete King from New York, Kay Bailey Hutchison, a former senator from my state of Texas. These are people respected in my party and deeply admired in the Republican Party. You who think know they the take Hill. it? If he gets stuff done, he could get reelected. So, Scott, but, I mean, the big question is, though, if he gets stuff done, and I think you alluded to this, Scott. How's he? Look, he's got to deal with possible impeachment proceedings, and the likelihood of that is growing by the day, right? So he's got somebody who's going to have to deal with impeachment. Someone who's to deal with a trade deal with China and the market going down a thousand points on any given day, and who knows what the heck's going on with all of that, right? He's got a lot of problems. Yeah, they, they have a lot of challenges, and, and I think if you take this job, you have to be clear with the president up front, like, I'm not a magic wand. I can't sprinkle magic dust on all of this and make it all go away. I can give you good advice. As Paul said, maybe someone who can deal with the Hill a little bit. I can talk to those guys and give you the best uh, view of what you can and cannot do. I don't have as rosy an outlook on what is possible this year as Paul does. I think very little is possible given the investigatory environment. Yeah. But I do think they can give it a good faith effort. And if the White House gives a good faith effort to trying to get things done, maybe they look like the bigger people here if the Democrats overreach on investigations. A chief of yeah. staff can help you manage all that if you let them. So here's the thing. We talk about this White House being in chaos, which it has often been and may be in some sort of constant state of. However, Paul, I bring you back to a Trump from Donald, uh, a Trump, a tweet. <laughs> we should call it a Trump maybe now, but a tweet from Donald Trump, 2012. Three chiefs of staff in less than three years of being president. Part of the reason why at Barack Obama can't manage to pass his agenda. Okay, Paul, here's the thing. Obama did have three chiefs of staff in his first term, and in that he's the same as Trump, in which case you could say Obama's White House was full of chaos. So maybe people who are picking on Trump for this situation are being too harsh. Uh, it's entirely possible. I'm always too harsh on uh, our, our president. Honestly, I am. I, I can't stand him. Uh, I just don't think it's comparable, though. He's also on about to have his third attorney general. He's already had two secretaries of state. He's okay, had three national security advisors. Yeah. Right. So it, the, I think the chaos here is unique. It's a fair point that sometimes people like me are, are, are too rough on him. And honestly, he's my president. I do want him to succeed. But golly, he is his own worst enemy. Scott, final word. You know, I think they're going to find somebody good. I think that there's going to be a, a good list to choose from. They don't have to make a hasty decision here. As Paul pointed out, the president may operate for some time without a chief of staff. At the end of the day, the biggest issues facing him, the investigatory paralysis and getting the economy on track for his reelection campaign. The